be warned, I'm not going to be encouraged anybody to do anything illegal here dealing with drugs and all of that. But in the headline, I did want to speak about a movie that I've watched so many times and I find is actually quite fascinating about a man that's on a journey chasing his dreams. The movie is called Blow and it's with Johnny Depp. And in it is the story of George Young, who is actually on a pursuit of trying to find self-fulfillment, finding himself maybe in the wrong direction of trying to live the life that he always dreamed of by being a drug dealer. And the reason I bring up that story is just because there's a particular scene that always caught my attention. And I know there's going to be a valuable lesson that you can apply if you've ever felt stuck in your business. So I'm going to give you three powerful things to think about as you're feeling stuck. If this is the vibe that you're feeling like clients aren't coming your way in the way that you would expect. Maybe you're not feeling fulfilled. Maybe the work that you're doing isn't paying you what you would expect it to pay, even if you're putting in all that effort. And this little lesson that's going to come from a powerful scene in that movie might help you reassess, realign, and really reignite the passion in your own business. So the scene that I speak about is midway through the movie. And spoiler alert for those who might not have seen the movie, Blow, it is a good movie. So if you haven't seen it yet, yeah, take a moment, pause this, go watch the movie. Although I won't be spoiling the whole thing, but this important scene is very interesting. Now, George has been in a path where he had started selling marijuana across America. And this, I believe, is in the 70s and eventually gets caught with so much of it that he gets thrown in jail. And during this scene in jail, he's having a conversation with his roommate in the jail cell. And they're always asking him about, you know, what is it that you do? What got you in there? And he's never saying he's never saying. And eventually he reveals the fact that he was actually someone that was uh, trafficking drugs, uh, which was marijuana. And his roommate, once he found this, actually took a moment. And as they're having a conversation in the middle of the night, he says a line, maybe you didn't fail uh, because you were not good enough at what you were doing. Maybe you failed because you had the wrong dream. And this is very interesting because, well, from that movie, let's just say he started dealing in a different type of narcotic that become a lot more profitable for him. And again, I'm not encouraging anybody to go in this direction. What I am saying is that whatever business that you're in, sometimes if we're working towards providing products and services to a certain audience and we keep working really, really hard and every sale seems like you're pulling teeth, like there's a lot of resistance, it's not going so smoothly we have to sometimes wonder if we're supposed to work harder towards what our current goals are, what our current dream is, or do we have to take a step back and maybe realize that perhaps we might be chasing the wrong goal. We might have the wrong dream and we need to take a moment to actually realign. And so here are three powerful things that I would want you to think about. If you've ever felt that resistance and you feel a little stuck, these powerful things to think about will actually allow you to reassess, maybe reinvigorate your current dream. If you can realize that, yes, this is actually the right dream I want to pursue, or perhaps we have to go into a different direction. And I'm not talking about doing necessarily a 180 going the complete different direction, but sometimes you have to just move a couple degrees to the left or to the right, only to find yourself being much more aligned and actually having the results you were looking for. So the first thing I want to make sure that you take a moment to think about is aligning value to the right audience. And so here I'm talking about whatever it is that you provide as value. You have to understand, are we providing it to the right audience? Is the people I'm selling to the people that can appreciate and get impact from the value that I provide for my products and services? And this one, I will admit, I see more than likely or very commonly when it talks about people that might be coaches. Now, if you're listening to this as a coach, I've noticed so many times when we pursue a certain target market, that is so difficult for them to spend their disposable income on the services that are being provided to find alignment, to find purpose, which are all great things to do as an individual. But if you are not in a financial situation to have the disposable income to hire a coach, then every time you have conversations with this avatar or target market, it's like pulling teeth and they can only afford very little and they will expect very much from you in return because this is a large percentage of their income that they're putting into solving this problem. And they might expect very, very high levels of service from you. This would create a situation where you're 
working really, really hard for people that are very hard to please and aren't paying that much to begin with. And I'm not saying it's a, ser- a market that you shouldn't be serving that sh- doesn't deserve to be served, but you have to understand that your business model to serve people that aren't ready to pay a large amount requires you to reach such a high volume for you to be profitable and effective that it might be difficult for you at the early stages particularly. Are you the right person for this audience and is the value I provide the best for this audience? Because On another side of the spectrum is if you're dealing with a very wealthy individual. I have a friend of mine that actually coaches and supports people to find their purpose, their passion, and that reignition of passion in their life. And they are inheritors of very large sums of money. They're a second or third generation of highly wealthy individual who are in their 20s and are kind of feeling lost and stumbling on their journey of figuring themselves out. And they're sitting on an amass volume of wealth. And so as this being a target market, it becomes so much easier for them to sell their products and services at a premium. And the results that they bring for these people are so fantastic because they have a stewardship over a large amount of money. Stewardship being that they will be responsible for a large amount of money. So the fact that they get to align these individuals with passion, purpose, and doing good in the world has a powerful ripple and actually supports my friend who is a coach to these people, brings the results for the client, and everybody wins. When they recognize their own expertise to help people find that in themselves, they align that their own value to the right audience, and it changed everything. Before they made that shift, they were working with employees within companies, and unfortunately, they were not in a position to pay a premium for his service, even though he was investing a lot of time and he had amazing expertise. So take a moment to look at who is it you are serving. Are they in a position to receive the full value of what you provide? Maybe we need to make some adjustments. Perhaps there's a different target market that you could review if you find that you have developed a lot of expertise and the audience that you're selling to just cannot get the value from it. And it doesn't diminish your value if you're selling it to a target market that cannot receive the full value and there's a disconnect. It just becomes a business that isn't sustainable. So Think about that adjustment. Think about that alignment. Because if you're finding yourself stuck or drained from doing the activities, this might be the root cause that might be causing a lot of these issues. Which brings me to point number two. Imagine you're sitting here listening to this podcast and you're having maybe a slight realization that you might be targeting the wrong market. Trust me, I've been there. And this hits home with point number two, which is embracing failure as learning. You're not going to hit a home run on your target market every single time if you go out in business. And quite frankly, you will notice that the majority of what needs to be spent in the early stages of business is kind of adjusting, pivoting, and embracing failure as learning because you're trying to find what is the product market fit. You have value to share. You've designed a product, you offer a service, and you're trying to find who are the perfect people to receive that value. And oftentimes, it's not even the initial place that you started looking in the first place. We've brought in guests who speak a lot about this, like Steve Blank, who's the man behind a lot of this startup movement, agile startup movement. Uh, For those of you who have read a book by Eric Ries around Lean Startup, a lot of it is about how can you move fast to validate your product market fit very quickly because the nailing of that allows you to scale to the next level. If you've ever read documentaries or or stories of entrepreneurs that seem to have all that struggle at the beginning, and then it seems like magic, they start scaling, they start having success, and they're dealing with very different problems about, you know, how do you get to manage all these millions of dollars, tons of employees, and it seems like that journey happens pretty fast. Well, when you have product market fit, it does. See, a company who has spent the time to find the product market fit has investors lined up to give money because they know what it takes to scale and they know the opportunity to scale, get to market and really expand is a key thing that you need to do once you've found that magic fit. And so if you're at the beginning stages, you're trying to sell yourself and you're trying to find who are the best clients I need to work for, how do I package my products and services, am I delivering results that they're looking for? and you realize you might have hit a failure or you might have gone to a point you're stuck, that's okay. That's part of the journey. It's one of the most important parts of the journey at the early stage of business. And if you're more established, you might be repeating this journey if you decide to go into a new market or release a new product. But having a speed to get through these failures really, really fast to be able to get to finally realizing, ah, 
this is the secret sauce. This is how it works together. This is how I package it, where I don't need to be pulling nails off people. People are coming to me and asking if they can work with me further. And so the demand starts happening. And you see this is a process that can take some time. But again, embracing failure will allow you to accelerate that time. It's why you see so much success usually happen from Silicon Valley. This embracing of failure is a big part of the culture. And if it's not part of your culture, you need to surround yourself with other people that understand that this is a longer cycle. And having people that actually give you that perspective, if you're part of mentorship programs, if you're part of any kind of support group, this is something that can get you back on your feet. It is a roller coaster of emotions, but if you embrace it and realize that it is part of the self discovery, it's going to make it much more pleasant to go through these cycles and make those adjustments as necessary. Which brings me to the third point I would ask you if you're feeling stuck, and you feel like you might be pursuing the wrong goals, you might want to make a sobering self assessment. What I mean by this is that if you're having these kinds of struggles, people aren't just flocking towards you, you're having difficulty making those sales, you've adjusted, maybe started taking a target market that you know, have the disposable income, and you feel you could sell to them. But there seems to be a disconnect between what you feel should be the value of that you provide and the excitement that people you sell to, we might have to reassess what is it that we provide? How do we provide it? And do we have all the right pieces in place for people to understand that value we want to give to them? So the sobering self assessment is, do you have someone you trust that can really reflect back to you? And when you actually tell them, well, this is what I provide, they can tell you some honest truths that you need to face. For example, you're providing a product or service, but people have a difficult time trusting you. What's missing? Do we have enough testimonials? Do we have enough case studies? Do you have enough experience that you've use this methodology or provided this service in different contexts that make it so that trust can be established. Trust is one of the hardest things to earn today and people are very skeptical. So what have we done? And what can we do to ensure that people are ready to trust us? So now we need to build our confidence. How do we do that? We go out there and serve. And there's different ways to do this for some who are very entrepreneurial, you're going to go and find some first clients and you might be charging less for what you're offering so you can get these case studies and stories of transformations. Maybe you're working for free. Maybe you're actually choosing the path of an employee within an organization that puts your skills to use and allows you to build powerful connections. As for myself, I know I've worked myself for seven years at Mind Valley, which was a personal growth organization where I got to put my skills to the test, connect with everyone in the industry, and actually build that trust and my own personal brand while being an employee. That was one path that I chose so that I could go out there and feel that, hey, my expertise is validated. And now when I go and be an entrepreneur, and I go and sell for myself, I have a lot more confidence to be able to provide value. And I can come with social proof, and some testimonials from people that will actually be able to vouch for the things that I've done. So that is one path. It is not the path, but it is something that you need to consider in your own self assessment. What are the missing pieces that make it so that the value you think that you provide can be actually shown to others. And that usually comes from doing the work with other people, whether as a volunteer, low cost employee, but really making sure that you're nurturing your own expertise, and you have a way of demonstrating value, trust, confidence in the process. So once again, you might be sitting at a point where you're feeling a bit of resistance, you might be thinking, do I have the right goal or not? Well, these are three powerful things you can look into. Make sure that the value provided is aligned to the right audience. Make sure that you are embracing failure so that if you've went in a direction and it wasn't necessarily a fit, this is part of the journey, you adjust, you repeat and you pivot. And finally, do a sobering self assessment and see what are some of the gaps I might have that prevent me from having the success that I want. And if you want to be setting the right goals, I'll give you one bonus thing in closing. It's always better to set a bold goal than a very non inspiring one. Not because I think if you set a bold goal, you're more likely to achieve it. But I will say you will take bigger steps and you will stand out more than anyone who is also taking small steps in their progress. And the quote that I often love when it comes to setting bold goals is if you aim for the stars, you might end up on the moon. And that's okay, too. But if you haven't aimed anywhere that exciting, then you might still be in the same place. So go out there, 
check on your goal, and you should be fired up, excited, and happy about the work that you're putting in. Especially if you chose the path of a salesperson or an entrepreneur, the fire in your belly becomes very contagious to grow the business, get the right people on board, and to sell with love in the process. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling With Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.